Oh, landmines and jellyfish. Welcome back to Knives, I guess. And Mom says it's my turn to unplug the life support. So, on the video I did about my relationship with Gerber, uh, an intrepid commenter pointed out that, you know, it didn't make them want to buy a Gerber. Uh, and they mentioned stuff like the QSP Penguin at the same price point was definitely what killed it for them. And they're not wrong, okay? Um, you know, I've said it before, Schrade, Kershaw, and uh, Gerber are kind of the big three Ford, Chevy, Dodge of basic knives. You know, even if you're not a knife guy, you know those guys, and if you're looking for something that's, you know, better than gas station grade, you know, not Ozark Trail or something, you're probably going to default to one of those, especially if you're an older American. You know, that is changing with variety starting to show up and different brands showing up at places like Walmart. You know, you can go into Walmart and you can buy CRKT and you can buy some other stuff. I haven't looked in a while, but... There's other stuff at Walmart to pick from. Um, and those three are definitely about five years behind everybody else on their budget offerings. Um, you know, you for the same price as, say, what I paid for this quadrant right here, which needed work to become a decent knife, you could get a QSP Penguin and not have to worry about any of this, and your flip off the flipper tab would be satisfying. You wouldn't have to do a wrist flake on it to make it work. And... Uh, <clears throat> You know, that's where they were getting, or, you know, that's the point that they were making, and they were absolutely right. You know, the reason that I made that video was just kind of sharing my experience and my relationship and why I have a little bit of a soft spot for these guys, even if they are dinosaurs. So, while we're doing this, and this is apparently becoming a series, we're going to take a look at my relationship with Schrade. And, uh, you know, I'll just kind of share why I have the soft spot I do for them. And I do think that the Schrades that I have held up a little bit better than, uh, you know, the Gerbers and the Kershaws. You know, Kershaw had a couple of good ones. That camshaft was really good, and that Lightyear Neon was really good. But, you know, Kershaw, again, the ones that I have are kind of lukewarm. I could live without them and be fine. I could lose them while traveling and be fine. But I think Schrade has held up a little bit better. And, uh, you know, some of these stories I've shared before, so bear with me. Um, you know, I know guys haven't heard them, and some guys have, but... You know, we kick it off with the hardware store near my house when I was like 12 or 13, and I bought some shreds from their display, and I shoplifted a few because I was an asshole when I was 12 or 13. And uh, I beat on those, broke them, lost them. And, uh, you know, I will say, my uncle, which was the man I wanted to grow up to be, that was like my uh, my role model, he, uh, he had piles of pocket knives everywhere because he had connections, so he'd get like a big old box of uh, police confiscated knives and stuff like that. I know he gave me a couple, and I wish I still had them just for sentimental purposes, but I don't. Um, I don't have much of anything from when I was that young left just from making bad decisions with the people I was around, making those moves where I'm going to stay with a friend of mine, it's going to be fun. And then it didn't wind up being fun, and I had to get my stuff and get out immediately before things got violent. You know, and stuff like that, I lost most of what I owned. And, uh, you know, the, the lifestyle I was leading at that point, I was trying to find places where we could get baked out of our minds and not run into authority figures. That's a hard area to find where it's full of good people. But um, during that journey, a friend of mine was going to Home Depot to shoplift air impact wrenches, the Ugga Duggas. And uh, so he goes in and he walks out with one and he has it like just tucked down the front of his pants. And it looked like he had a big square bulge. And uh, we didn't know that Home Depot doesn't really chase you down if you shoplift because it's the manufacturer's problem because they're the ones that are putting it there and uh, paying Home Depot to use the space. So he walks out with one of these and I see it and I'm like, dude, can you get me one? Because I wasn't ballsy enough to go in there and shoplift myself just because I've had so much bad luck doing stuff like that. I got lucky that I didn't get caught um, and taken into, you know... I would get caught, drop my stuff, and dip instead of waiting around for authority figures like the police to be called. So I just kind of stopped doing that stuff. But he walks in, comes out with another Ugga Dugga gun, and this one. And, uh, you know, we take them home, and we sit there and work on the actions because these are, you know, riveted in place. They're not, uh, they're not bolted. There's not a, a pivot screw. And this one was pressed super tight, so it was very hard to open. And, you know, we're lubricating these things with WD-40 and opening them and closing them, all that. And, uh... It got better, but not perfect. And uh, about, I don't know, six hours later, I was in a whole different city using this thing to process a pound of hippie lettuce. And uh, I don't even remember how I got there. I just wound up there off of uh, leaving the house and getting into random stuff. You know, that kind of stuff happened all the time. And uh, I couldn't tell you how I got there or why I was there to begin with. But um, this thing rode out that house with me and the emergency move out of it. 
it wrote out the next spot and the emergency move out of that. It wrote out the following spot, and these moves all happened within about six months. And, uh, you know, it was still with me when I got married the first time. Uh, I wrote out the divorce. It wrote out the move from the divorce to somewhere else. It wrote out the, the move from there to here. And this is one of the few things that I managed to hold on to and keep track of that whole time. Like, there's a little bit of stuff left from that far back in my life. And uh, I've carried this through several jobs, several hard, hard use environments where I was just beating everything I owned to death. This thing soaked up ungodly amounts of punishment and shrugged it off. Like, you can see there's a lot of dings and scratches on this. It's seen a whole lot of carry, a whole lot of use. Um, I wish I would have known about using lanyard holes. I didn't really think about that back then because it would have made this a bit easier to deal with. But... You know, this thing has survived a lot, and I'm just very sentimental about this one because it's one of the few things I have from that far back, and it's got a great story to it. You know, this is from about two different lives ago, and uh, I love this thing. But before the divorce, we had a neighbor next door named Bruce. That dude was cool as hell. I'm helping him clean out his garage, and we find this little 430T in a desk drawer, and I absolutely freak out, and I asked if, he could, if I could have it, and he's like, yeah, you know what, sure. And uh, this thing has a pocket clip, which is tip up, and that is the Lord's carry. But this is from before I became a devout disciple of Tip Up because I didn't understand the nuances of it at the time. Um, I was used to not having pocket clips at all. So I was kind of fiddling with this and carried it some and I liked it, but it wasn't this. And at that point in time, I had a Benchmade automatic that flew out of a pile of leaves when I was cleaning out a, an unmaintained area at the college I worked at. And that thing had a missing tip, so I ground a new tip on it and I rocked with it. And by the way, if you have to grind a new tip on a black coated knife, and uh, you don't want to see that big silver spot where it's supposed to be coated and isn't, fill it in with a black magic marker. It makes it almost undetectable unless you're sitting there looking for it on purpose, and that black magic marker stayed on that thing for the better part of two years before it finally broke. Uh, when I got that thing out, I washed all the mud out. I didn't even lubricate it because it didn't occur to me, and uh, I just covered the spot that I ground off with a black magic marker and ran it for years. That magic marker stayed put, it got harder to, to detect as time went on and it got a little dirty, but it worked. But, you know, that thing is long gone. So a little bit later on, um, after these kind of got retired and I started working at a golf course, I wanted something that wasn't this because I didn't want to lose it. Um, one thing I've learned when you're on rough ground like that on something with no suspension, a mower, a golf cart, a steamroller, believe it or not, stuff falls out of your pockets constantly. So... I wanted something with a clip and I went on Amazon and saw this and you know one of the first things I looked for was a Schrade. Um, I had bought a couple of Kershaws and you know they uh, they kind of left me a bit lukewarm but this thing I bought this and it was chameleon paint it was shaped like this and I'm thinking okay normal opener all that pocket clip is tip up which is the Lord's carry another act of providence um, again I wasn't looking for that but I get home it shows up on my porch I take the box inside and I open it up and I'm looking at it, looking at the paint, and I see this tab. I'm like, what's this do? Oh, my God. You know, it blew my mind because this is the first assistant opener I'd handled. And when I tell you there was a long period of time where I couldn't buy knives and didn't know anything that was happening with them, I am not kidding. I didn't know assistant openers were a thing. Uh, let's flick the bean again. Eh. And, of course, this one, the flipper tab just totally vanishes in here. I think, I think you might be able to get a screwdriver in here and pry this back out if you wanted to, but there's no reason. And, uh... This thing was definitely very good, and, you know, after that uh, Benchmade Automatic broke, I wanted another one, but they were all really expensive when I was looking for them, so Assisted Open became, let's open it again, eh, it became the, the replacement for Automatic, and I fell in love with this thing, I carried it for a long time, you can see, it's had a good few hot suppers, it's been beaten on pretty badly, but it took it with no problem whatsoever, and it's been in absolutely filthy environments, and nothing has really been affected, it's been sharpened a few times, like, this thing has done really good. It, it definitely held up well. But, you know, this thing eventually got retired when I started find, finding better and newer knives. You know, that uh, Kilimanjaro Magnus multi-tool. I wound up carrying that just for, you know, what passes for utility with that. It's horribly impractical and tough to carry, but it's fun. So, uh, after I found the Boker Kalashnikov and kind of and kind of got my automatic fix satisfied... Not too long after I bought the first one, I found this on Blade HQ on sale for $22. It was on clearance because it was uh, discontinued, and it's a small automatic. And uh, this thing, it's a nicely built little guy. 
it is very small i think that's about a two inch blade and uh you know it's, it's got like some nice contouring and all that i would have liked something besides desert camo but it was 22 dollars, and you didn't really get to take your pick i bought two of these the wife has one somewhere probably in her drawer next to the bed but you know this is the one that i got myself and i carried it for a while and i used it some and it's got it picked up its first scratch right here yeah you can see that that first scratch sucked the, the first scratch or ding on a new tool always hurts. But this thing carried really well. Um, you know, I really enjoyed having it with me. And you got a safety right here so you can lock it. And uh, it, ain't, it ain't going anywhere, open or closed. Which is useful, but I never actually use the safeties. Um, I'm not a smart man, necessarily. And I feel like things are safe enough until I cut myself. And then I look at the safety like I should use that. And then I don't. But... Uh, and I would give you the Shrey model names on these, but outside of the 470T Beast and the 430T Beast, all these are just letter and number salad, just random letters and numbers. Shrey sucks at naming things. So uh, this is the this is the ones I have so far. And then um, Midway USA had this on sale for 40 bucks. It's the Shrey Viper OTF. This is an interesting beast because you have to you have to practice for a while to figure out how to use this thing one handed comfortably. The, the launch button's all the way down here. So you gotta reach and fire it, and then you gotta reach up to here to press the safety down to release it so you can reset it. Now, if you have small hands, this is probably not gonna be for you because, again, you gotta reach all the way back here, and this is where you would grip it for normal work unless you're, like, really aggressively choking up. And then you gotta reach all the way up here and reset it to pull it back. I can do that comfortably. It took a little practice, but I got there. Um, but... You know, a knife that you have to learn to use better have a lot of high-end stuff going on and make it worth learning to be worth the money. And I think this uh, retails for, I think I saw like 70 80 85 bucks. I got mine for 40 and for $40, I think it's a decent value. Anything more than that, absolutely not. This thing is definitely worth 40 bucks. Once you get past that point, no. You have better options out there that might be more expensive, but you're not making a bunch of compromises in your quality of life to use it. So I do like this thing for what it is. And, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of the blade shape, but you don't get to pick things when they're on sale for that steep of a discount. Uh, these scallops right here are at least a little bit finer. They're uh, single-sided, so you can get some finer stuff done with it. But I would prefer to have just a straight dagger point or something along those lines instead of these weird scallops. They don't look good to me, even though they function just fine. So uh, that's the Shrade Viper OTF. And then the last one that I have in my possession is a, a fixed blade and a Schrade Plus 153UH, unsure, but you got Schrade Super Sharp um, etched in here and it's real faint. I think it may, have, uh, it may have been dark and rubbed off, but a friend of mine sent this to me and it's the weirdest damn thing. Um, in our blacksmithing community, we tried to all maintain some pretty good friendships and I still love a lot of the guys there even though I'm not like participating in the group chats or anything because they pop off non-stop 24 7 and i don't have the energy but um sprinkled donut forge a guy named james he uh he was he's red bling, red green colorblind and you know he's living on some tight money he ain't got a whole lot floating around so i had a few extra bucks and you know i got him some of those colorblind correcting glasses for christmas one year and uh, everybody apparently thought i did something special and started sending me stuff, and he sent me this, and it was covered in corrosion, so I got the uh, tools out, got the corrosion off, got it shined back up, got it looking good again, and uh, if I carried fixed blades, I'd definitely have some hours on this and given it a few hot suppers. Again, my lifestyle doesn't really mesh with carrying fixed blades, and I can't really carry a good fixed blade at work. I'm supposed to be in, you know, casual dress attire. I'm supposed to be in a button-down shirt, black slacks, all that. So, like, I can carry these tucked in the waistband and they're hidden well enough. And when I'm in the back room, no one says anything about me busting out a pocket sword. But a fixed blade is a no-go. I still like this thing. And, you know, I, if, I, if I hit a point where I can carry a fixed blade, this will get some time on it. Um, this came with a sheath that fits it pretty nicely. It's got the little button on here. You can see some of the corrosion left that I didn't get to because I didn't want to buff part of the leather and leave the rest of it untouched. And it's got... A fairly fine sharpening stone that also needs to be cleaned up. But So I am sentimental about this. It came from a friend, and I did put some work into making it nice again. But, you know, these are the shrades that I have. And I feel like this one is kind of a, a swing and a miss, uh, unless you're the right kind of person or you find it at the right price. You know, if you can find this on sale for a steep enough discount, sure. 
Full retail price, absolutely not. But this and this were good value. These I'm just really sentimental about. And this one right here I'm sentimental about. And I haven't really gotten to carry it. So, uh, you know, and th these are the reason I have a big soft spot for charades. Some of the stuff they make has been really good. Um, I haven't bought any new charades. And my wallet talking right there should tell you that warm, fuzzy feeling only goes so far. You know, if I was really, really, really into it, I would have bought a lot more stuff by now. But a lot of it hasn't really grabbed me and said, you have to buy me when I'm, you know, able to buy like a Civivi for 25 bucks. Or, you know, I still need to get the Penguin and look at that. But, you know, the Ontario Rat too. So many things that are, uh, you know, they're so much better. Like the blade steel is a bit better. The factory edges are better. You know, uh, a flipper tab on bearings is so much easier to deal with than an assisted opener in a lot of cases. You know, I'm not going to back off of this uh, automatic knife. A $22 automatic, I don't care. That's a great value for the money. And this thing has held up well compared to its contemporaries because that automatic makes up for a lot of shortcomings that it would have otherwise. So that's kind of where I'm at with Schrade. And uh, again, like the point was made, this isn't necessarily going to sell you on Schrade. This is just why I have a soft spot for them. And again, for the same money, there are nicer, fancier, better options out there in a lot of these cases. And I, I probably need to buy a couple of newer Schrades just to check them out. But, you know... This is the collection as it stands. I may have forgotten a few of them in the three different piles of knives I have now, but this is what I could find. So all that being said, thanks for looking at my crap. Uh, thank you for the subscribers. It is humbling to have people watch this stuff and enjoy it. Uh, thank you for the comments. I always enjoy some feedback. And all that being said, y'all have a nice day.